Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to episode 57 of Lab Padre Starbase and SpaceX Weekly Updates. This is Thomas hosting for today. We have a ton to go over, so let's dig in. Starting off this week, late Friday night, Ship 24 was rolled out of its spot in the Rocket Guard and down Highway 4, making what was hopefully its final trip to the launch site in preparation for final testing ahead of the first orbital test flight. Later, Booster 7's transport stand was moved to the Sanchez site, a sign that SpaceX intends for the booster to stay on the mount until launch. Saturday morning, the nose cone currently assigned to Ship 30 was lifted in the yard at the end of Tent 3 and placed inside of Low Bay. About an hour later, Rovercam caught another sea level raptor on its way to be installed on Ship 26 at the new stand by the Rocket Garden. In the early hours of Sunday morning, another section of Booster 11's liquid oxygen tank was moved into the Mega Bay in preparation for stacking. First thing on Monday morning, SpaceX performed a test of the FireX system on the orbital launch mount in preparation of a new round of testing. Much later in that morning, the QD arm swung away from the tower and then the chopsticks were raised and positioned around the top of Booster 7, but did not actually connect to it. Over the next few hours, the road was closed and the pad was cleared ahead of the day's booster and stage zero testing. While the pad was being cleared, the first test of the day was seen when all four of Booster 7's grid fins were rotated back and forth. Next, Stage 0 was cooled down, and then cryogenics began loading into Booster 7's methane tank, followed by the liquid oxygen tank. Shortly after, both tanks were topped off. The booster was slowly detanked over a period of several hours. As the detank was wrapping up, the chopsticks opened and raised back up above the booster and rotated away before being lowered back down the tower. And finally, the day's tests were finished up with a final depress vent from both of the booster's propellant tanks. A short time later, the ship's lifting pins on the chopsticks were rotated out into position indicating a full stack was next. In the early morning hours of Tuesday, Ship 24 was moved from its parking spot near Test Stand A and was delivered into the waiting arms of Mechazilla. Later that morning, the chopsticks were moved into position and the pins attached to the ship, but high winds kept SpaceX from completing the full stack. Around the same time, the first section of Booster 11's methane tank was moved toward Mega Bay as SpaceX continues stacking of the booster. That night, the Raptor installation platform was moved to the build site as SpaceX works to clean up the launch site in preparation for launch. Meanwhile, workers were spotted grinding off the launch mount's alignment pins as it appears SpaceX opted to remove them before launch. By Wednesday morning, the winds had died down and Ship 24 was lifted up the tower for stacking and the QD arm was rotated back in. Unfortunately, a cable hanging from the bottom of the ship caused the lift to be aborted and the ship lowered back down so workers could remove the cable in order to prevent it from interfering with the lift. Once again, the ship was lifted and the QD arm swung into place before the ship was rotated over the top of the booster and lowered. Unhappy with the initial stacking, the ship was lifted back up and realigned before stacking was completed and we once again had a fully stacked Starship and Super Heavy. Several hours later, after workers had removed the covers from the quick disconnect panels, the QD was extended, aligned, and connected to Ship 24. Not wasting any time, less than 20 minutes later, we saw a test retraction of the system followed by it once again extending, aligning, and reconnecting to the vehicle. Over at the build site, Ship 28's aft section was moved into high bay as SpaceX moves forward with vehicle stacking. An SPMT was rolled out of the build site loaded with scrap rolls of stainless steel which SpaceX sometimes uses as counterweights called pet rocks. On Thursday, after days of rumors and speculation, tweets from SpaceX and Elon finally gave us official word on their plans moving forward. This coming week we should see a launch rehearsal and then if everything goes well, we could see the long-awaited first orbital test flight of the Starship program the week after. And switching over to Florida, Bob returned to Port Canaveral after recovering both of the fairing halves from the recent Starlink Group 5-10 launch. The next morning, fairing recovery vessel Doug towed a shortfall of Gravitas out to sea in support of the Intelsat 40E and Tempo launch. Less than two hours later, Crosby Skipper brought just 3 d instructions into port with Falcon 9 Booster 1077 following its fourth successful mission. 
Just hours after docking, the booster was lifted off of the drone ship and placed on shore to be prepared for its transport. On Wednesday, B-1077 was lifted and laid horizontally on the transporter for its trip back to Hangar X. This week, we are happy once again to bring you a Florida flyover update thanks to Greg Scott. Multiple cranes were spotted at Launch Complex 39B as NASA works to prepare the site for the next launch of their SLS rocket, which is expected to launch no earlier than the fourth quarter of 2024. Just this past week, it was announced that NASA astronauts Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, and Christina Cook, as well as Canadian astronaut Jeremy Hansen, will be the four members of the Artemis II crew. At the park site, just north of the Vehicle Assembly Building, Another crane shows that NASA is working on repairing and refurbishing Mobile Launcher 1, which is currently their only platform for SLS. Back in 2019, NASA leased High Bay 2 in the Vehicle Assembly Building, along with the Mobile Launch Platform 3, to Northrop Grumman for their now-canceled Omega rocket. The lower doors of the bay were open during the flyover, allowing us a rare glimpse into the massive bay. Following the Saturn Causeway out towards the coast, Mobile Launch Platform 3 has been parked next to the Launch Complex 39 Observation Gantry, where it is being scrapped now that Northrop Grumman no longer plans to use it. At SpaceX's historic Launch Complex 39A, the Falcon 9 Transport Erector was laying down on the pad for reconfiguration in preparation for the next Falcon Heavy launch. Obvious visual progress seems to have all but stopped on the Starship infrastructure. While the new vertical liquid oxygen tank looks the same, however it is likely plumbing work is still going on inside and underneath it. The chopsticks are still strapped to the launch tower, awaiting the installation of the traveling block and the deadline anchor followed by cable reaving. SpaceX's other Florida launch site, SpaceX Launch Complex 40, is also undergoing construction work in between Falcon 9 launches as they work to build a crew access tower at the facility allowing for a redundancy for crew and cargo Dragon launches. Several miles to the southwest, the parking lot at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility is mostly full, illustrating the busy nature of the site. On the east side of the site, Hangar X, home to Falcon 9's refurbishment operations, is always busy thanks to SpaceX's rapid launch cadence. Having already completed an amazing 23 orbital launches so far this year, their record-setting pace will ensure this building stays busy, keeping the reliable Falcon 9 fleet launch ready. As we can see here, a Falcon 9 booster wearing its layers of soot as a badge of honor sits outside the southern end of Hangar X, either awaiting for its next mission or for space to free up inside the hangar. Next, it is quite the fancy SPMT, complete with an enclosed cap for its driver. At the developing Starship production facility on the west side of the site, work continues, but at what appears to be a slower pace, similar to what we see at 39A. The next Starship integration tower is still holding with seven of its modules assembled. While work has slowed, man lifts at the top of the level of the fourth section indicate work is continuing. All of the steel for the remaining sections is on site, but assembly of the new sections stopped two months ago when the assembly crane left the site. Near the tower prefab area, the end of the QD arm is still sitting waiting for Mechazilla to be ready for it. Also in the area are the traveling block and the deadline anchor for the 39A chopsticks. Just west of the tower modules, work continues on the 3rd Tower's Chopsticks and 39A Tower's QD arm. Assembly of the base structures of these newest chopsticks appear to be complete with rusty weld lines to show how many pieces were used in their construction. The carriage that will help guide the arms up and down the tower is still half assembled with a claw-like extension nearby on the ground. Next to the carriage, equipment around the QD arm seems to indicate that work is still ongoing on this structure. With the LR11350 still in pieces at the launch site, it is unlikely that the arm will head to the pad anytime soon. In the southwest corner of the site, the Florida Star Factory now appears to be structurally complete. This sharp looking black and white building will be used to pump out ring sections from the lower part of the building and nose cones from the taller southern end while section stacking operations will happen in the future mega bays. The western wall has two large overhead doors, big enough for ring sections to pass through, as well as a dozen small doors that will likely be used to move parts and smaller equipment in and out of the building. Moving on to the first of the Florida Mega Bays, this week there finally appears to be something to report, but not the progress we were hoping for. Although the steel has been staged around the building's foundation, much of the steel on the northern side is gone missing and has been presumably been spotted at Starbase. The yellow Buckner LR-13 crawler crane has been moved closer to one of the driving lanes around the site. 
The ground around the two cranes used to have a lot of additional Mega Bay steel staged for assembly. Given the position of the yellow crane now and the absence of the steel that was once here, it, it seems quite possible that the crane was used to load the steel onto trucks for transport. If you think this steel is headed over to Starbase for the new building being built there, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Just south of the Kennedy Space Center's Vitizer Complex, Blue Origin continues to work on developing their New Glenn rocket while expanding their Florida facilities. The site's northern campus is home to act development of the New Glenn rocket. The new second stage cleaning and testing building looks to be complete, but given the number of cars around it, there is likely some finishing work still happening inside. The presence of two trailers containing high-pressure gas canisters, however, may indicate the building could be operational very soon. The pile of New Glenn hardware outside seems to have grown significantly in the past month with everything from mobile stairs to what are likely horizontal rocket cradles. The southern campus continues to be mostly an active construction site. Blue Origin has been busy in recent months, both expanding their existing warehouse as well as constructing new buildings. The warehouse expansion is structurally complete and it appears workers are wrapping up the installation of the two large rooftop air handling units. The lot to the west is now largely empty after previously being used to stage the steel for the addition to the warehouse. Work is also progressing on the new vertical assembly building. A small fleet of man lifts in and around the building show that the steel crews have been working hard on the structures of this building. Since the last flyover, steel beams have been added across the front and back doorway openings. Presumably these are temporary bracing while the rest of the cross bracing between the columns is installed. Next door, the new Reef Pathfinder building is now structurally complete and even has roofing and cladding installed. The graded areas at the north of the site will be the future home of a covered storage building, a maintenance support facility, and a composite assembly building. Next to the temporary office building, the eastern part of the composite assembly building should be the first groundwork to be completed in this area. On the southeast corner of the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Launch Complex 36 is where Blue Origin will launch their new Glen rocket and is the home of the tallest water tower in the world. On the east side of the shuttle landing facility, work is underway on the new side of Space Florida's Project Comet. Not much is currently known about this site other than that it is a $120 million facility for processing payloads. Just to the north of the Project Comet site is the Doppler antenna field for NASA's 50 MHz wind profiler that they use to observe the upper level wind conditions between 6,000 and 60,000 feet. All appeared quiet at United Launch Alliance's Space Launch Complex 41 after the recent cryogenic testing of their new Vulcan rocket. The debut launch of this rocket has been postponed while the company evaluates issues with the Centaur 5 second stage following a failure during testing in late March. Down the coast at ULA's Space Launch Complex 37, the second to last Delta IV Heavy is inside the mobile service structure awaiting its launch. In recent days, we learned that the launch has been postponed due to off nominal behavior from a flight valve. At Relativity Space's Launch Complex 16, all is calm following the company's inaugural launch of their 3D printed Terran 1 rocket last month. While well, the Terran 1 rocket failed to reach orbit, it powered through Max-Q, proving that 3D printed rockets are a structurally sound concept. Space Launch Complex 46 is still waiting as Astra attempts to pivot to their Rocket 4 launch vehicle following the unreliability of their Rocket 3. Finally, let's end with a quick tour of the SpaceX assets at Port Canaveral. Just read the instructions docked in port following its return from Starlink Route 5-10. While in the port, this time it appears that the autonomous spaceport drone ship was undergoing extensive maintenance as it is the oldest of SpaceX's landing barges. In particular, a lot of work seemed to be centered around the rusty containers on the right side of the barge in this image. Attention also seems to be given to the ship's octagrabber, which is used to secure the boosters after landing. Farron recovery vessel Bob was also docked waiting for its next mission. And there you have it, another Starbase and SpaceX weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We will see you again next week, and thank you again for watching. Thomas out.